What's up, everybody? Hey, listen, we back at it again, right? It's your favorite aunt and nephew, you know, smoking the grilling with AB, and y'all know that right here, Mr. Make It Happen. So listen, today we're getting ready to do a jambalaya. You didn't already seen that, read the title. Listen, I'm not trying to over talk it or nothing like that, nephew. You know what I mean? We finna get right into this. I'm looking forward to it. This is right out of our Best of Both Worlds cookbook that's finally back in stock. You can get yours right now and save on shipping with the code FREESHIP at checkout. You need this recipe that's in the cookbook, you need a cookbook in your life. Right. Let's so, get it. First thing we're gonna do is what, prep, right? Yep. So I see you over there, you finna work with the Trinity, huh? Yes, sir. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the Cajun Trinity started, which is comprised of onion, bell pepper, and celery. Nice fine dice on that. AB's gonna get started on the protein. All right, so look, you say I'm gonna do the proteins, right? So yep. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this down. How you wanna do it, man? You got some andouille sausage over here. I like bite-sized pieces for mine, but whatever. bite size, you don't want the dangling, little, little circles. Uh, Whatever's best for you. What, I, I like to make it the same size as the chicken, so it, you know you kind of get an even bite with the fork. I got you. I'm gonna go ahead and dice up the onion. No right or wrong way to do this, but I like to leave the root intact a little bit easier to prep that way. And he just already mentioned that this is a smoked andouille sausage. Not like the chicken one that I normally use, but this right here is just a fire. Looking forward to that. I haven't had jambalaya in a minute, so there's no better time to do it than right here with you here in Vegas. Yeah, for sure. Nice knife set you got here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That can be picked up on my website, smokingagrillawithab.com, and that's W-I-T-A-B.com. There we go. Now so, look, I'm gonna do it like this, because I like to, when you say bite size, I do some of these this way, and I like to do something like this. I like to make sure that this, I like it to be a little bit on a meaty side. Nothing wrong with that. Heavy protein, go with the carbs. So I'm gonna dice the <laughs> celery up about the same size as the onion, same thing with the bell pepper. You can throw some red or green bell pepper in here. I like the red sometimes for some color contrast, but whatever you got in the in the fridge or whatever is available or on sale at your grocery store is a good place to start. Okay, so look, if you look at nephew right here, check out what he's doing. He's dicing this down, right? That's the bell pepper. But I want you guys to pay attention to the size. Yep. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's, it go like this. Listen, it was taught to me, and I'm giving you guys the gems. Small is for fra flavor, and then the larger uh, dice, that's for the texture, right? Nice. So listen, I went ahead and did this. I moved uh, my, my andouille sauces over to the side. You guys can see, a little pro tip. Go ahead and just put a uh, damp, you know, I guess this is a dish towel or whatever you want to use. Paper towel works, right, paper whatever towel you got. Works, right? right, so now I'm going to go ahead and cut these down. And I'm using this whiteboard right here, you know, for my for my chicken, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. Now, he say he wanna match this. The reason we doing that is we wanna make sure that everything kinda uh, is finished at the same time, right? So I'm just gonna cut them down like this. You get a little bit, you want it to be a little bit on the thick side. Right. I'm not finna bore you guys, but listen, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this down like this. There is no certain shape or nothing like that. As you see, I'm turning my knife. I do that just for myself. All right guys, so what we got right here is a skillet with a little avocado oil in it over medium heat. To that, I'm gonna go ahead and add the andouille sausage. We wanna get that started so the fat can begin to render from the sausage, because we'll use that as the foundation of flavor for the other ingredients like the chicken and the shrimp we're about to cook. Hey, one more thing to that. When you guys looking at this recipe right here and watching us put this together, a lot of y'all didn't even know to make a jambalaya is like super easy. You're talking about prep time, about 15 minutes. Yep. Right? Just super easy. Oh, and one thing I didn't show earlier, that would have been the, uh, the long grain. In my opinion, one of the best one pot meals there is out there. You do everything in the same pot, tons of flavor builds throughout the recipe. Can't go wrong with this one. Great for meal prep. You throw a little cauliflower rice in there for my keto folks. If you don't want to use the, the white rice, cut back on the carbs a little bit. <laughs> I'll do that sometimes. Right I need right. to get back to that myself. <laughs> I'll leave that over there like that. I'm not gonna leave this here. So what we're doing is right now, we're really infusing it. What we're doing is putting a lot of flavor inside the pot, right? So after we're done with this, everything that the andouille has rendered down, that's the flavor that we're gonna use to make the uh, chicken and the shrimp. All right guys, so the, the sausage is looking good. Nice, you know, golden brown. You wanna see some, some good color on there. That's gonna add flavor and texture. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that, and then in goes our chicken. We'll season that up as well. Everything stays in the same pot, lots of fat, lots of flavor been rendered from the sausage already. And do is common in Cajun Creole cuisine. It's got a little smokiness, a little spice to it. Adds tons of flavor to your jambalaya. 
Right, and then notice a lot of times you guys see me do bacon or something like that, and I'll put a, you know, I'll line it with the, uh, with a paper towel. Don't do that. This right here, everything that's going to here, to whatever falls down, we want to protect that, all that flavor, and then you want to add it back in when, it, uh, when the time comes. So now, there we and go. And goes the chicken. She's all yours. Right on into that andouille sausage fat. So that's one layer of flavor. We're gonna add a little all-purpose seasoning to the chicken as well. A little lemon bay or Cajun seasoning, whatever you got laying around to work. And then a little paprika or smoked paprika. Okay, so look, when you're cooking chicken, you always want to temp it, right? We're looking for 165. There we go. We're coming up on 159, 162. We stop it there because we're going to continue Perfect. to cook it a little bit, you know, longer once we get everything, you know, mixed in. And it'll keep cooking a little bit as it, as it cools off a bit once you remove it. It'll continue to, to cook, come up a couple more degrees in this bowl right here. So as you guys can see, we have tons of flavor built up at the bottom of this skillet. And what's that called, y'all? Talk to us down in the comment section below. Tell us what that is at the bottom. If you've been watching. We're gonna go ahead and get the chicken out of here and then get the mirepoix, not the mirepoix. We're gonna go ahead and get the chicken out of here and then get the Cajun Trinity in there to start soaking up that flavor. Now you heard him say mirepoix. Yeah, I guess if it, uh, there's only one other ingredient we put with that that makes that. Yeah, some carrots, but a little different than, the Cajun Trinity is like their version of the mirepoix, right. basically. So. Get the heat back on and go to veggies. Then if you guys pay attention to the veggies, watch how they change color, especially the onion, because it starts to pick up everything. Yep. All right guys, so the Cajun Trinity is cooking down beautifully. We're gonna go ahead and add in two tablespoons of tomato paste, followed by some garlic that we're gonna get from AB. And I gotta say right now, look at that, that, that garlic clove. That right there looks like he on steroids. Right? <laughs> the more the better for me. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of seasoning. I like to season as we go. That way we're building flavors all the way throughout the recipe. A little bit more all-purpose, a little paprika. You can add a little chicken bouillon powder if you wanna you know, add a little flavor enhancement. I like to add that sometimes, especially with a rice dish. It's gonna help it out a little bit. Plus, the chicken broth we're using is no sodium in it. So a uh, little chicken bouillon powder will add a little more flavor. I'm gonna talk about your about the Creole kick. I mean, you know, for me, anytime I do anything Cajun or, or Creole, you know what I mean, I start with this. And I got it. If I'm saying Cajun, but I'm using Creole, this right here still gives you the authentic flavor. I have never, ever had nobody come to me and tell me like, hey, bro, that tastes like Creole, not no, um, you just looking at the name. But this right here just sends it over the top. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of this to it. All right, so let me go ahead and put a smile on my face. You know what I mean? There it is right there. Fresh garlic. Immediately you had a house smelling amazing. You can use minced garlic if you want or garlic paste, but nothing beats fresh. All right, so we got the garlic in there. We got some flavor. We're going in with some fire roasted tomatoes. So what you guys can see, like we really, really building a whole lot of flavor, right? Instead of just a regular petite or diced tomato, you want to do fire roasted. You just want to get a lot of flavor and this is what kind of like takes you down south and make you go home with it. Absolutely. So now we're gonna go ahead and add the long grain white rice, one cup in total. All right. We're gonna give that a mix, allow the rice to kind of toast and open up a little bit, start to uh, absorb all the flavors that we got in there. And then, my friends, we're gonna add the chicken broth, bring it up to a boil, cover it, reduce it down to a simmer, and cook it for about 20 minutes until the rice starts to get fluffy, at which point we'll fold in all of our protein. Right. So now that everything, yep. you can look at the rice and see everything's been coated. There's no more white. There we go, get that one little mix, and then we'll bring that up to a simmer. All right, so as you can see, our rice is just about there. We still got a bit of this liquid needs to cook off, but now's the perfect time to go ahead and add back in the protein and any accumulated juices. So there's the chicken. We got the andouille sausage. AB, if you want to hit the shrimp with just a touch of Creole kick or lemon bay, something, we'll let the the shrimp's gonna absorb a lot of that flavor too, so you don't wanna overdo it on the shrimp. I'm gonna do a little mixture. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Then I'm just gonna mix all of this in and then bring it up to a simmer. And once that liquid cooks off and the rice gets nice and fluffy, we got ourselves some jambalaya. All right, so in goes some green onions, about a half cup worth. Then AB's gonna add that shrimp. We add the shrimp at the very end, guys, that way it doesn't get overcooked and all rubbery. 
Just wanna add the shrimp in, fold those in. Once the shrimp's at 145 internal, it's safe to eat. And the residual heat in here, as the rice finishes cooking, is gonna be perfect to cook the shrimp. All right, folks, after watching that B-roll, you know, pouring this, or what I like to say, we just plated it, right? Listen, I'm not finna over talk it. Look, uh, nephew, we finna just dig in. But I will say this, you can look at this right here, and you can look at that in the cookbook, and you can see just how easy it is to, you know, replicate it. Look, make it a little pretty real quick, a little dice. Hey, what you saying that, man, I gotta tell you, man, I told you I'm hungry, bro. Man, look, bad. we ain't even, we ain't even took no pictures. Hey, the, even. the camera eats first. Right, 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 right. I'm so <laughs> glad you're here. Okay, folks, look, there it is. Listen, this time we got the garnish on it. Listen, I've been like super hungry, right? I'm gonna go ahead and let the cheat code out right now. I went to the pot where you left a little bit in there right there. I left there. it there just and for then, you. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now, listen, we're not finna over target. We're finna go in here and get us on. We left the tails on I'll for controversy. Let us know in the <laughs> comments if you like tail on or off on the shrimp. I'm gonna the grab shrimp. the handle, taste the shrimp. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead. Mm. And give Man. Me, give me one of these shrimp too. Flavorful. Make sure you guys get the best of both worlds cookbook. Use the code free ship for free shipping and make yourself some delicious food. Listen, I'm not gonna draw it out, but you know, make it long and nothing like that. Hey, he ain't already told you, listen, this recipe is in our cookbook, best of both worlds. Listen, backed by popular demand. And when I say that, I mean that. So I yep. wanna say thank you to everybody that copied it already. And uh, listen, you guys already know, I'm Unc, this is my nephew, and you know how we do. Check it out, all the information is in front. And guess what, folks, we out. Peace.